Yep, that's right. Disney may have actually given Robin Williams a forged Picasso. And it may not have even been a Picasso at all. But before we get to that, we need to understand why Disney gave Robin Williams a Picasso in the first place. Now, I just wanna be honest with you. Normally my videos take just a few weeks to write and produce, but this one took the better part of a year. I had to dig really deep for this one. It was 1992 and Aladdin was firmly in production. The legendary writer-director duo, John Musker and Ron Clements, wrote the genie character specifically with Robin Williams in mind. At the time, the genie was supposed to just be a bit part with only a few lines. There was a problem though. Disney voice actors were typically paid scale, around $75,000 for their parts. Williams' going rate at the time was allegedly around $8 million. But seeing as it was just a small part, he agreed to record the genie, mostly for his kids. But there were a few stipulations. Over at dinner, Williams told Disney executives that they could not use his voice in any merchandise and that his character could not take up more than 25% of any posters. They agreed on a handshake and production moved forward. In typical Robin Williams fashion, a recording session that was supposed to last just a couple of hours turned into over 30 hours of tapes. His constant improvising turned into tons of additional sequences, and the genie turned from a bit part into a main character. Williams initially didn't have a problem with this until he saw the posters. The poster broke the condition that Williams' character couldn't take up more than 25% of advertising artwork. He also learned about the onslaught of toys featuring the genie that were being promoted with his performances. Needless to say, Williams was not happy. He called Disney Animation head Jeffrey Katzenberg to voice his frustrations. Katzenberg apologetically agreed to recall and remove all of the offending posters, but it turned out that he removed them only in the areas that he thought Robin would be likely to see them. He kept them up everywhere else. Williams took to the media in a rare instance of an actor publicly bashing one of the major film studios. Mr. Robin Williams! I have some people I want to thank. I can thank Jeffrey Katzenbug. On the Today Show, he said, We had a deal. The one thing I said was I will do the voice. I'm doing it basically because I want to be part of this animation tradition. I want something for my children. One deal is, I just don't want to sell anything. As in Burger King, as in toys, as in stuff. Feeling the negative publicity from one of the world's most famous actors, Disney decided to send a peace offering, a Picasso, said to be worth more than $1 million. But this only added fuel to the fire. What Robin wanted was compensation for the considerable value that he added to Aladdin and its merchandise, not a painting. Disney went right ahead with a straight-to-video sequel of Aladdin, but seeing as their relationship with Robin was in pieces, they recast the genie as Homer Simpson himself, Dan Castellaneta. Soon though, Katzenberg was ousted from Disney and replaced by Joe Roth. One of the first things that Roth did was apologize to Williams, which evidently mended the relationship. Everything worked out with Disney now. We're back. I know. It's okay. <laughs> Everything is okay. But after all of that, one question remains. What painting specifically did Disney give Robin Williams? The earliest source that I could find for this whole story was a New York Magazine article published in November of 1993. The only description of the painting was that it was a late Picasso, in this case, a self-portrait envisioning himself as Vincent van Gogh. It also mentions that this is one of a series of such paintings where Picasso envisioned himself as other artists. All right, awesome, my job is done. Now all we have to do is find that series and we could pretty easily narrow down the painting but there's been one huge problem. Outside of references to this story, I couldn't find a mention anywhere that a series like that even exists. Because of this, there are some out there that insist that this painting might have been a fake or a forgery. After digging quite a lot deeper and finding nothing, I decided to try to contact anyone I could that was involved originally. The first person I attempted to contact was William's wife at the time, Marsha. Unfortunately though, she's notoriously quiet these days and I never got a response from either her directly or her representation. Next, I tried to reach out to Robin's children and again, no response. Then I reached out to the writer of the original article, Jesse Kornbluth, and finally, I got a reply. Kornbluth was able to confirm a few things for me. First, that it was a late era Picasso. Second, that it was brown and objectively ugly. And third, that Robin described it as a take on Van Gogh. That should be enough to begin our search. Now, unfortunately, an entire catalog of works by Picasso isn't available online. These artist catalogs, or catalog raisons as they're referred to, are researched and written for use by art historians and auction houses, and they aren't cheap. The most well-known and thorough Picasso catalog raison, or CR for short, costs nearly $25,000. 
So needless to say, I had to find a free online alternative. The most well-researched archive I could find is suitably pabloruizpicasso.net. They have a list of over 3,000 of his original paintings, so that's where we'll begin our search. First, we know that it was a late era Picasso. Second, we know that it was brown and objectively ugly. Third, we know that it must be in a private collection as opposed to a museum or gallery. Fourth, we know that it was a self-portrait or at least a portrait of a single man. And lastly, we know that he described it as a take on Van Gogh. There's an issue though. The Van Gogh descriptor is tough. There's no widely known series of Picasso self-portraits where he painted or envisioned himself in the style of other artists. For this reason, let's leave it off our list, at least for now. Now, if we look back at our original search criteria, we can come up with a really strong, educated guess. El Bobo, a painting that was created in 1959 and is currently in an unlisted private collection somewhere. Feeling pretty good about this conclusion, I sent this painting back out to everyone that I had contacted before to see if they could identify it as the painting that Disney gave Robin Williams. Jesse, the writer of the original New York Magazine article, couldn't confirm it. So I moved on, confident that I had probably found the right painting. Well, shit. Zach Williams, Robin's oldest child, told me conclusively that El Bobo is not the painting that I'm looking for. That sends us straight back to the drawing board. This got me thinking. What if the painting wasn't Picasso envisioning himself as Van Gogh, but instead just a portrait of another artist? Finally, one series starts to become likely. A series of paintings all called The Painter, all created in Picasso's late era. These works are all of artists painting at an easel, and they're all done in different styles. And the kicker? Several of these paintings were worth right around a million dollars in the early 90s. It all makes sense. Now all we have to do is find which of these paintings specifically that Disney gave Robin Williams. The first paintings in this series were created in 1963. We know that one of those paintings was destroyed in the crash of Swiss Air Flight 111 in 1998. It's not known exactly which of these paintings was the one that was destroyed, but there are some sources online that believe it to be Le Peintre 4. And then it jumped out at me. The 1965 painting, The Painter with Hat. There's something very interesting about this painting, the hat. Several of Van Gogh's self-portraits feature a similar looking hat. When you compare them side by side, the resemblances start to become very clear. And lastly, it's the only painting in this Picasso series that features a hat that even vaguely resembles those featured in Van Gogh's portraits. It all fits. It's a late era Picasso, it's dull in color, it could conceivably be described as objectively ugly. It's part of a series of portraits of artists, several of which were worth right around a million dollars in the early 1990s, and it has at least a strong theoretical relation to Vincent van Gogh. This, I believe, is the correct painting. Now, if anyone that's watching this is related to Robin Williams or knows anything else for sure, please let me know. My contact info is in the description. I would love to update this video in the future as more info becomes available. Until then though, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos about Disney-related history. We cover lots of different topics ranging from the movies to the theme parks and just about anything in between. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again real soon.